I wish to congratulate Mr. Philemon Yang on his election to the presidency of this United Nations General Assembly. I also congratulate his predecessor for the contribution he made to the implementation of our common agenda. Through you, I convey my wishes for your every success when it comes to discharging your mandate. We see the unwavering commitment of our Secretary General Antonio Guterres, his efforts to promote peace, human dignity and multilateralism are now more than ever before necessary. Senegal once again expresses its full support for his mandate in these times of global turbulence as I take the floor before you today. I speak with the conviction, the deep conviction, that we are united in diversity. Indeed, unity in diversity is the key to guaranteeing sustainable development and human dignity for all everywhere in the world. This, the theme of this session that will guide our discussion invites us to rethink our collective responsibility and to guarantee that the fundamental principles of the United Nations set more than around eight decades ago contribute to upholding the promise of a fairer and more equitable world. Ladies and gentlemen, ours is a troubled world, a world in which the principles of the United Nations Charter, which uh, talk about equality, justice, and the respect for human rights are every day put to the test. Conflicts are spreading, inequalities are widening, and climate crises are rendering millions of people throughout the world even more vulnerable than they were before. Moreover, we are witnessing a worrying trend to call into question multilateralism at a time when humankind needs it more than ever before. The world must stare the truth in the eye. The ideals that we swore to defend are being trampled upon in all four corners of the globe, whether we're talking about Gaza, Tel Aviv, Dakar, or elsewhere. All human beings are equal in dignity, dignity which transcends borders, cultures, and religious affiliation. It is is incumbent upon us all to ensure that this dignity be protected and respected for all human beings, regardless of who they are. This duty is the very essence of the United Nations. However, every day we see international law as the very foundations of international peace is violated. Resolutions adopted by this General Assembly are treated with flagrant disregard. We have repeated violence. The principles of the UN Charter are kicked to the corner, and we see the undermining of this very house of peace. Never before the foundations of the United Nations have been as shaky as they are now. We're seeing violence, fear, and uncertainty being sown. If we wish to vanquish the spectre of war, and usher in a better world, well, it's high time to change our paradigms. It's high time to put human beings at the heart of our international agenda, as we're invited to do by the theme of this session. President, ladies and gentlemen, we no longer wish to stand idly by and watch the tragedy in the Sahel play out. Terrorist groups there are sowing terrorism. They're pillaging, they're killing innocent civilians. This region was once stable and now it is in the grips of daily violence. At the same time, the United Nations, specifically the Security Council, it remains inactive all too often. Moreover, we can't allow the Sahel to become the theater of foreign rivalries, clashes between which do nothing other than destabilize the region. Here, I must remind you that the peace and security of Africa are inextricably linked with global peace. It is vital that the Security Council better play its role as a guarantor of international peace and security. Once again, let me say that Senegal is deeply concerned at 
by the tragic situation playing out in Palestine. Entire generations have grown up in Palestine in the shadow of oppression. They are deprived of their fundamental right to a viable state. Senegal, as president of uh, the chair of the Committee on the Inalienable Rights of the Palestinian People, calls for an immediate lasting ceasefire. We reiterate our support for the two-state solution, with East Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine, in accordance with the relevant resolutions of the United Nations. This war spares no woman, no child. It, spare, it does not spare vital infrastructure and is an open wound on the international conscience. It's vital that international humanitarian law be restored in all conflict zones. It's vital that the United Nations fully play its role as mediator and guarantor of peace. Ladies and gentlemen, peace is not simply the absence of war. Peace is also every human being, being having the possibility of living in dignity, the possibility to feed themselves, have accommodation, get an education, and to receive health care. And yet, and yet, today, more than 750 million people are going hungry. And a million every day live in abject poverty. These figures are drawing the world ever further away from achieving the SDGs set for 2030. We can no longer allow mechanisms for global governance continue, continue to reproduce these inequalities. It's high time to do away with a dog-eat-dog -dog world and to build a new global contract based on solidarity and cooperation. This social contract must include major reforms to address political, economic, Im and Im the environmental challenges of our age. Firstly, it's vital that we safeguard and strengthen multilateralism as the unique framework within which we can achieve and protect international peace and security. Doing that involves an urgent reform of global institutions, namely the Security Council, the IMF, the World Bank, so that these institutions become more inclusive and reflect the economic and geopolitical realities of our time. The African continent in particular must have a more meaningful place in these decision-making bodies. Secondly, it's high time to repair the economic injustices which hinder the development of many countries in the global south, illegal trade, tax evasion, illicit financial flows, and abusive tax systems harm developing countries, namely in Africa. These injustices must be corrected in order to allow all countries to fully participate in global trade and to benefit from economic growth. Third, it is vital that we resolutely work to tackle climate change. We must do that by respecting the the principle rather of common but differentiated responsibility. The industrialized country historically responsible for mass greenhouse gas emissions must step up their efforts to finance a just and equitable energy transition which does not penalize developing nations. We must, as an absolute imperative, protect our planet without sacrificing the rights of the most vulnerable nations to continue their development. Fourthly, we must thwart any attempts to impose unilateral ways of existing and civilizational models. Since its independence, Senegal has staunchly defended the equal dignity of cultures and civilizations. This diversity must continue to be the cornerstone of the peaceful coexistence between peoples. No nation must should impose on others its practices or its values as universal. The respect for difference is the very foundation 
of peace and stability throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Senegal is staunchly committed on this path, to this path rather. We've chosen to build a state wholly focused on sustainable development with ambitious initiatives in terms of clean energy, food sovereignty, and transparent governance. However, we know that to be successful in those endeavors, we need collective action and international solidarity. No country, however powerful it may be, can alone address the challenges threatening humankind. As such, we must act together, united in our diversity, to usher in a future in which human dignity is protected, where justice prevails and where prosperity is shared. It is through cooperation and mutual respect that we will overcome the crises shaking the very foundations of our world. I thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Senegal.